Philadelphia is definitely one of the best rosters in the game, period. They are. And I know I'm not alone. I know you're not alone. We talked about this a lot in the offseason. We all expect them to win the NFC East. You know, I, I, I got them going to the NFC Championship game when I had to do all that in my podcast. There's nothing to look at their team and go, oh, wow, there's an issue there. They are really damn good, and they're really well coached on both sides of the football. So that was a big test to go there, their home opener on a Monday night. You know how crazy that stadium can be? Yeah, it was, it was a little much for them, but hopefully they can learn from it and grow from it in Minnesota. But, damn, I mean, the Eagles, you, Jalen Hurts, it, when they can run the ball like that with those weapons on the outside, and if he can just hit the guys that are open, he doesn't even have to be, like, spectacular. And last night he was spectacular. And then the defense makes plays like that and dominates the run game. They're going to be in the, in the, the final countdown here with all these teams. And, and everybody out there needs to realize how good they are. They do. This is a team that, like, you look at their schedule and I go, there's there's no question that they have a week seven bye. They got the Commanders, the Jaguars, the Cardinals, and the Cowboys coming up in the next four games. They are better than all four of those teams. I got no problem saying that right now. Now, they got to go out in the field and do it and can't mess it up. But I don't see anybody on their schedule that I go, ooh, that team's got the same type of dudes the Eagles got until maybe week 12 in the Packers, and that's a maybe. They have the potential to be a 9-2, and 10-1 and one type of football team here with the way the schedule shakes out. Let's see if they can capitalize, but they got something special there in Philadelphia, and Hurts plays like that like he did last night. Watch out. They're a real Super Bowl contender in my mind. And you'll see we – We'll, we'll have them on NBC twice, week six at home against the Cowboys, week 12 at home against the Green Bay Packers. Here's Hertz from last night on whether he feels more comfortable in the Philadelphia offense this year. I think everything comes with time, you know, and I'm, I mean, it's the same things that I've always said. It all comes with time. Um, and as time goes, you, 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 you find more comfort in what you're doing. You find more of a niche of what that looks like for you. Um, and I think as an offense, um, as a collective group, Coach, Sirianni, Stike, um, Brian, myself, we put so much so much work in um, to trying to make things efficient I and mean, trying to be efficient. Um, you know, I said it earlier, no man is an island. You must draw your strength from others. Um, I, I can't perform without the other 10 on the field. Um, and same on the other side. They need me to do my job for them to eat. So um, it's a collective group. Um, it was a big team win, a big time team win. Um, it's something that we'll definitely enjoy. But we have a short week, and we're headed to DC. Um, so we'll enjoy it for a little bit and, and get ready for the next opponent. You know, Jalen Hurts has always had that kind of natural charisma, that leadership. But I feel like the Eagles organization has been reluctant and slow to embrace him. I think after last night, they have yeah, to be getting him close. Right. We, we've heard we've heard the chatter. They were in the Deshaun Watson conversation. Maybe others. Yeah, definitely other others. quarterbacks who right. potentially were available, whether it's Russell Wilson or Kyler Murray or whoever the case may be. Constantly looking and looking, turning over stones in search of a franchise quarterback. It was Jeffrey Lurie who said it himself a decade ago. Our most important priority is to find a franchise quarterback. Then Nick Foles throws seven touchdowns and zero picks against the Raiders, and they think they found him. Remember, Chip Kelly anointed him as the starter for the next thousand years, and that didn't work. Sam Bradford, Carson Wentz, Nick Foles, revolving door, and now Jalen Hurts. It may just be the franchise quarterback right under your nose who grows into the job and who ends up being a pretty damn good player. And, you know, I thought last year, it's like, okay, he can do enough to help you win. Right, right. If you do everything else around him. To me, last night, he morphed into guy who can go out and win the game on his own. Yeah. Not just a situation of he's good enough to win the game if you have a great defense and a great running game and great receivers. Now, I, I feel like he's becoming the guy – he's still got a way to go to catch a Josh Allen because it's only year three for Jalen Hurts, but it feels like he's on that track where he's going to get better before our eyes and maybe he will grow into this franchise quarterback role. Well, he definitely an NFL starting quarterback, right? That, that, that to me has been solidified. He's that now. Now it's just like you're talking about. How good is he? How good is it? You know, it's a little different than Josh Allen and stuff because everything plays through Josh Allen and the offense is all about him. 
And Philadelphia, it really starts with the run game and defending the run game with the running backs and defending him in the run game, and then that opens up everything there. And it does take that great overpowering offensive line to do that. But to your point, like, he's more than that right now. Uh, he's seeing the field really well. He's putting the ball where he should be. It's not a wow arm, but it's a good arm, you know. It's certainly good enough to get it done in the NFL. And then his toughness, you know, his work habits and his leadership and all of that, to me, that's where, you know, he is special. But, like, am I going to sit here? And, again, that last night was awesome. But it, there's still a part of me that wants to say, I, I, you know, again, I'm not holding the Eagles to, oh, I think they can beat the middle class and the lower class in the NFL. This team's a Super Bowl team. So when I talk about Jalen Hurts, I talk about it in a fashion of, like, what's he going to look like when he's got to play the elite defenses in football that some of those easy runs might not be so easy. You know, some of those, it don't be just hand the ball up, up 10 yards up the middle and then we fake that run up the middle and I throw a ball two yards in the flat to A.J. Brown and he gets 15, 20 yards. That's where I just w want to see. But still, there's definite progress and I think they're getting to the point, to your point here, is where they got a guy, you know, for the future. They do. And it seems like it's very close to where he's getting close to solidifying that. But I'm just um, – I'm impressed by the man. I really am. He's got a great feel of when to run. He's got a great feel of when to hang in the pocket. He throws a great deep ball. And then the, the, other, the last thing I love about him is just the attitude like you talked about. Yeah, I don't know. Is he in his 20s or is he 55 years old there, the, the way he talks? Because he seems like the wise old man that's always been around, but yet he's in his 20s still. He's a very interesting character, and uh, it's hard not to root for him and like him. He's become a very vocal advocate in Philadelphia against gun violence. He right. some passionate words in the summer, and he still continues with that objective and agenda. I, I, he's a guy to admire. He I, is. Look, I, 100%. I, 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 I think he was spectacular last night, and it's easy to root for him because he kind of got discarded in Alabama, yep. and it's just always felt like the Eagles are – are using the wandering eye for someone else, right. someone else. And now I've been one of those the, guys. Yeah. He's, he's becoming the someone else that they've been looking for. That's and, right. Uh, and, and coaching has something to do with it. And talent has something to do with it around him. But when you see the way he played last night, like you said, he knows when to run. He knows when to pass. He's making his reads. He had a great throw to Dallas Goddard at one point that they were raving about after the game that just shows how he understands the offense right. and how to get through the progressions and when to get rid of the football and how to deliver it accurately. And it is a difficult position to play with all the things going on around you. He stays calm in that storm and he's getting better. You know, every quarterback at that age is going to get better. They're going to stay the same or they're going to get worse. He's getting better. And I think that's great news for the Eagles. And I think they are a real contender. We're, we've said – for months, the NFC is wide open. Yeah. You got the Buccaneers, you got the Rams, who knows where the Packers are going to fit. There's room for teams to step up, and the Eagles are the early season. Clear. I mean, I know the Giants are 2 0, too, but it's Yeah, different. the Giants aren't in the class of the Eagles it's, on that it's team. It's a different right. vibe. It is yes. a different vibe. Right, right. I mean, the, the Eagles have shown in two weeks that they have the ability to be dominant, you know, even in the Detroit game. I know Detroit came back and it kind of got close at the end, but. There were still two quarters there of like, whoa, the Eagles are unstoppable and there's nothing you can do. You know, that's what I find interesting about the NFC in general, too. To your point there, you know, one team that I'm going to throw in that category as well is the 49ers. You know, that, that was the thing I kept talking about on my podcast, and I know we hit on it in the preseason a little bit. It's just that, to me, the two of the best rosters in the NFC had quarterback questions. Well, the Eagles quarterback question is falling by the wayside in a hurry here. And now we got Jimmy G heading up the, the 49ers charge again to where it makes things interesting. But, yeah, the Eagles got it all. And, and the last thing I want to say, Mike, too, because, you, 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 you know, I, Jalen Hurts brought up, like in the era of we're all looking for the new offensive guy, Shane Steichen, if, he's going to be a head coach next year. He's been on my radar, and I know a lot of other people's radars, going back to his days in, in, in San Diego with the Chargers, and then going to the Colts with Frank Reich, and then here two years with the Philadelphia Eagles and Nick Sirianni. He to me is like you know public num you know what a public enemy number one guy of the offensive mind who could be a head coach next year. Certainly deserves to be in that conversation from what I've seen over the last few years. And the benefit to the Eagles is this: if Steichen gets a head coaching job elsewhere. 
you still have an offensive guy. There's no doubt. Tied to Jalen Hurts. Sirianni's and you don't have to too. go out and find new attack, new playbook, new right. guy. That's and, and nothing against defensive coaches, but I would hire an offensive guy for that reason because that quarterback relationship is so important. You you do the Sean McVay thing. But do you think Sean McVay's knees buckled at all when Zach Taylor left, when Kevin O'Connell left, when guys leave for promotions? No, because he's still him. So Sirianni will will groom another Shane Steichen and and find the right guy, and, and he's got the relationship primarily Sirianni does with Hurts. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.